Hi everybody, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how I built this 3 inch freestyle FPV drone as a 13 years old. You're going to see how I made it through this hard process. And if you want to know why the drone looks like this right now, stick to the end of the video. But before we start, let me first tell you why I chose to build the drone myself, not buy a pre-built one and get into the air quicklier. This is because if I want to become a good pilot, I have to know how to repair my drone in case I crash it and break it, what would definitely happen. Alright, so let's start with the parts. As frame, I'm using the Seeker 3 freestyle frame from Deep Space FPV. Many people buy this as a pre-built drone, but I'm saving a bit of money by building this myself. It's a dead cat frame, what means that you have a clearer footage without props in your video. For FC and ESC, I'm using the SpeedyB F405 mini stack. The pre-built drone has a F7 stack, but for me, the SpeedyB stack is already enough and it also has Bluetooth, which means that you can configure it on your phone with the SpeedyB app. I'm installing the DJI o 4 Unit Pro and the frame is also designed for this. For T-Hobby T-Motor P1604 motors, the pre-build comes with 1505 motors, I believe, so these motors should give a bit more power, but also a bit less of light time. And on top of the motors, HQ Prop T3633 in green. As receiver, I've got the Radio Master RP1 V2, and at last, six of these Tattoo R line. 4S 750mAh batteries. You will also gonna need some tools for the boat, like a soldering iron. In my case, it's a secure SI012. And of course, some solder as well. Just get you some lead free solder for your health. And you will also need a 1.5mm hex screwdriver and some pliers are very helpful as well. So let's move over to the build. At first I assembled the frame. It was kinda tricky though because the arms are sandwiched between the bottom and the middle plates, but you just have to be a little bit patient. After assembling the frame, I kept on with soldering. The big pads were pretty easy though, but the motor wires were harder than I thought. I definitely should have practiced it before, which I didn't. But thankfully, everything went well. While soldering the XT30 wire, I actually considered a different way to do that. My first idea was to place the capacitor into a hole of the bottom plate and to run the XT30 wire over the air unit, but it came out that the air unit was blocking a part of the hole and the capacitor wouldn't fit. Plan B was to run the XT30 cable through the hole and under the bottom plate and bend it back up at the rear of the frame. The problem of this way was the length of the cable, it was just too short for it. So I pulled out the ultimate plan C which was to run both the capacitor and the XT30 cable over the air unit, with the capacitor between the both wires. So, done with the soldering. The last thing that remains was to mount the VTX and the props. So now, let me introduce you my first self-built FPV freestyle drone. It has the XT30 cable on the VTX, as I have shown you. And at the end of the build, I also decided to wrap the ESC with some electrical tape because it's the electronic part that's most likely getting hit by water. 
but I have no idea if this would work. Okay, but there's still the big question. Does it break the magic 250 grams line? Let's find out. Okay, I've got scale. Make sure it's set to zero. Okay, the quad itself. The battery strap. A micro SD card and a UV filter. And at last, a 4S 750mAh battery. Okay, that's pretty close, but we've made it. Yay! Alright, so the drone is ready to go. And with my impressive 30 hours in the Orca Skydive Simulator, which was the only free one I could find, I feel free to accept the big challenge, the first flight. So on the next day, I went to a nearby field with my drone, ready for the challenge. Yeah, to be honest, the first flight was not very spectacular. I just flew around a bit and tried some basic maneuvers. But, but, I didn't crash. It's something at least, right? Another thing that I noticed is that the 30 hours on the simulator were really worth it. But it's still very different to fly a real quad and I definitely have to keep practicing. I will not show you the entire flight in this video. Maybe I'm gonna put it in another one. So, as you may remember, I promised to tell you about the current situation of my quad. On the following week of my successful first flight, I took it with me on our tour to Venice. And on our way back home, I decided to fly it at a lake somewhere in Germany. The first pack actually went pretty well, but at the beginning of the second pack, I made a big mistake. Right after I took off, I flew to the other side of the lake. Then I accidentally flipped the switch to angle mode. This itself wasn't the problem, but it was what I did afterwards. Unfortunately, it's not on the footage, but I can tell you. So after I flipped the switch, I was panicked and wanted to switch right back. But I mixed up the direction and flipped to horizon mode. On this time, my right stick was pitching 100% forward, what made my quad doing a roll and crashing into the ground. So I immediately made my way to the location where it crashed. The silver line was that I found it and nothing broke. But I had to open it up and clean it though. It told me a lesson that I should be careful with the mode switch. Alright, so that's the end of the video. Thanks a lot if you've made it so far. Like and subscribe to help me growing the channel and see you next time.